Good morning, or good afternoon, or good whatever it may be. Time for some language arts. Looking at understanding different points of view. If you have the text for closed reading, go ahead and get it out. If you don't, just follow along. And one of our essential question is, what do we learn when we look at the world through the eyes of others? Hmm, that's what we're determining. And today, we're gonna to compare and contrast, um, once again, first person narrative, uh, as in here, boy, and third person narrative, as in waiting for Stormy. And we did take a look at this as also a dog's life. That's kind of a, not a first person, but a first dog narrative, because it's coming from the dog's point of view. All right, so if you have a piece of scratch paper, go ahead and get it out. And we're going to do a little Venn diagram. When I was a substitute teacher, I used to tell the students that my uncle Vin invented the Venn diagram. Okay, so we have two, uh, two circles, different, different, and the same. Um, so let's put uh, here, boy. First person narrative and waiting for Stormy. So we're not interested about how the stories are different per se, like this is about a horse and this is about a dog. We're just comparing the first person and the third person narrative. So what are, is a pronoun that we use in the big word, the big pronoun we usually find in first person narrative? Think about this. Uh, yeah, I. Okay. Then think about what we usually have here. Hmm. We would have things maybe like pronouns such as she, he, him, her, or the character's name. In this case, remember it was Maureen and Paul. And over here we could also have my or mine. So that's how they're different. Um, and um, also we think about here boy and the language used in here boy. It's more informal. It's more conversational because it's what the character is saying. So we have informal, such as, um, what does she say? Uh, Wait a minute. I, shout, I hollered, that's my dog. Don't call the police or don't call the pound. So it's more informal, more conversational. But if you look at Waiting for Stormy and the way the author describes Maureen's dream or her daymare, or Paul's daymare, as the teacher said, it's more formal language. It's very descriptive. And then also on the third person, it's a big fancy word called omniscient. And that just means knows all. Knows all are omniscient. And the author knows what Paul's thinking. The author knows what Maureen is thinking. The author knows, or the narrator knows, what Misty's up to, and what the chicken's up to, what the teacher says. Everything. The narrator's like floating above the scenes and reading the minds of others and letting us know. How are they alike? Well, they both tell a story, right? But when we're talking about first person and um, third person narrative, in this instance especially, they both tell how the characters feel, their emotions. And when we talked a little bit about that, we do have to do some inference. You know, the, the narrator doesn't come right out in third person and say, oh yeah, Paul was very distracted that day because he was busy thinking about his uh, horse, Misty, and, and Stormy, the, the, the pony, or the foal. So um, we have to infer that. And then we have to infer that um, Opal in this story, we have to think that she must be a nice, caring person because she doesn't know anything about that dog that's running uh, through the wind, Dixie. She just says, you know what, he's my dog. I don't take him to the pound. So we can see that both first person and third person, they, they can tell how the characters feel. We can infer how the characters feel. 
And that's the big difference. So I hope you enjoyed the Venn diagram. We'll be making some of those next school year. I know that. And I hope to see you real soon. Make sure you check your science and social studies sections to see if there's any videos in there. I'll talk to you later. Bye.